Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mahmoud Alode, and again in another video for service process design and improvement. In this video, we will be continuing on some of the quality tools to um, ensure uh, the quality of a service. And we did talk about the service package quality and we look into five criteria, such as supporting facility, facilitating God, goods, information, explicit services, and implicit services. And for any service, you could use this five criteria to evaluate it and see if you, if you really have a nice facility location, uh, information, is it up to date? Uh, how many uh, items do you offer? Variety of items to the, uh, to the customer. Uh, you're looking into the training, the, that's the explicit services do you offer training for your employees are they certified uh, and uh, implicit which is basically the decor of um, of the uh, facility the music the background music uh, and something like this so we did talk about that in the previous video and, and now we're going to move into the Togoshi method. The Togoshi method is a unique technique that uh, initiated by Dr. Togoshi. He's one of the pioneers in quality. He believes in experimenting things. He looks into different factors and look into what factor will impact the, uh, the outcome. And these call them the uh, critical factors. These are the important factors. So for the important factors, Dr. Degoshi said, try different aspect of your settings and then collect some statistic because the statistical plan experiments can identify the, the parameter for the process. And, and the whole thing is removing the variation from the process. Uh, variation is not good, so we need to consistency. So he believed in consistency in design specification. He believes in consistency in performance. And how we could reach the consistency? We could reach it by identifying the factors that will impact the result of the outcome, the outcome of the process. And Togoshi uh, said, if you do the design of experimental DOE or uh, uh, or what we call the uh, experimental design, you have to follow these four steps. The first step is to select the process to be studied. Number two, identify the important variables for that process. Number three, reduce the variation for important vari variables. Number four is to open up tolerances for unimportant. So if there's something, if a, a factor that is not important, that could be ignored. Uh, so, for example, if you're doing if you're doing a study to measure the customer satisfaction, you want to see the gender if that's a play a big role in uh, in the customer satisfaction. So, once you once you design a survey and um, there you found that there's no significant difference between the male and female, and you result in a conclusion where the gender is not important. So your marketing plan should not, should not focus on the gender aspect. Maybe it could be focusing on something else, such as the, um, the decor, the, the music, the background music, et cetera. So, uh, so what you need to do is identify these factors and see which one, which one of these factors will be helpful and based on that, if it's important, then reduce the variation there. If, the, for example, if a customer cares about how long it will take you as a restaurant owner to serve the food, if that's the case and they don't care about, you know, the layout of the restaurant or the look of the outside facility, uh, maybe this is, you don't want to worry about the outside facility. Maybe you just want to worry about the time to get the customer, um, the food to the customer and maybe the quality. So this is what you want to do is identifying few factors, important factors that will impact the quality of your service. Something to mention about the uh, Togoshi method. Uh, Togoshi came up with, uh, with a different technique that now most people, they think that the tolerances is where they're important. Yes, they are important. And most of the people, they think these tolerances is comes into just a, a, a fixed point where if if you exceeded that point the customer will be unhappy but that's not true actually 
uh, the, the customer wants to be their products on the target. So five minutes wait time, that would be the, the good thing. Any variation between that would be maybe not happy. So the, the, what they're saying, the ghost is saying is any variation, any, uh, any variation from the target that would may make the customer unhappy. So we need to uh, target this point where we could offer the customer a good quality service. So again, any variation away from the target will result customer dissatisfaction. As the, as the variation increase, the customer will gradually become dissatisfied. So this is the old thinking we're saying, okay, well, as long as we're within this uh, five to 15 minutes window, that would, be, that would be awesome. So the customer would not be happy. Actually, this is not true. So assuming the target is seven minutes to serve your customer. So uh, the more you are away from the target, that would be uh, resulting in customer dissatisfaction. All right, here's an example for Togoshi. So this is where you want to offer your customer this type of uh, this type of service, uh, like these oranges. This is the perfect taste, the perfect uh, target for them. So if you offer the customer this one, maybe this is uh, it's this is this is not what they're looking for. Maybe this is the best taste and quality here. So a way if you offer them this that would result in unhappy customer. And the same thing if you offer them an early uh, before it's ripened, this is, would be uh, also resulting in customer dissatisfaction. Another example here, to, just to show you the, the, the customer satisfaction, as long as you are meeting the demand and meeting the target, this is the target in the middle of this normal curve, the customer will, uh, unhappiness uh, would decrease. So, which means you're ga gaining more money. The loss of customer, it's going to decrease. But however, the more you are spreading in the data and you have, your data is having a variation, the more loss would be for your customer and the less profit and uh, revenue will be, you will be getting. Another example, just I want to look into that from a different perspective. Uh, and uh, a study that I've done here for BSU, working on uh, uh, understanding the factors for adopting e-textbook. Uh, so we, if we're going to apply to Goshi method, we need to apply, uh, we need to identify the factors and find out which one would be the most critical. Uh, is it the cost? Is it uh, enjoyable or when they're using ethics book? Is it uh, performance expectancy? Is it the effort expect expectancy? Is it the social impact or gender? Uh, these all factors that could be identified in uh, adopting a textbook. So adopting an electronic textbook. If the students has a, a experience in technology, would that fit them? That would encourage them to do that. So through the survey that I surveyed uh, students, I, I found out that there are students are not, the value is not important as long as the easy if use, if that's an easy if use, that's what they're looking for. So I did identify different factors. I surveyed my students on what would be the most important factor for them. And I found the most important factor for them is uh, easy of use, how easy the textbook to be used. Uh, and then now if I wanna do a business in e-textbook, I would like to focus only on that feature, which is how easy my students to uh, use the electronic textbook. All right, now there's another technique that I wanna go over it here, which is the Pokayuka. This is uh, an observation that, uh, 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 that preventing errors from happening at the first time. How is that happening? There is uh, there is basically uh, ways to prevent um, mistakes from happening by creating uh, a way to help educate the, the customer. So, for example, if you look into the service industry, if they if they look into the airport, they provide some frames to help custom customer determine if their bag can go over and the overhead bin uh, as a uh, as a hand luggage so this is an important for application for pokayoka there are a lot of application you go to the recycling pen 
in the recycling bin, you will see that uh, one of the bins that has a, a circle opening, which means that you recycle uh, the, the soda cans in, in, in something that looks like a circle. However, there's another recycle bin where recycling bin where it has uh, a, a, a rectangle opening, which means that you could recycle the paper and cardboard. So that's another example. So the Pokayoka, they put the responsibility on not only the service owner, however, they also put some tools to help the business owner get some help from their customers. So the customers themselves, they could go and do the inspection, do the quality part of it. And by creating something like this, you will be able to ensure the quality of your service. Uh, an example for here, uh, Pokayoka method, where a hotel reservation employees is expected to make eye contact with customers. So uh, there is a form that the employees has to fill. It's, it's called the Pokayoka form. It asks the employee to enter the, the eye color of the customer. So this is maybe one way to ensure that your employees will look into the customer's uh, eye. So they're, it's a mutual uh, responsibility between the customers and the business owner uh, represented by the employees and the workers. So uh, some of the practices for the Pokayoka is uh, in order to achieve the quality goal, you need to design some uh, techniques and tools to help them reach to that goal. So. Uh, in, in short, what I want to say, this is, uh, it's, an, it's a, a preventing employees from making mistakes, also preventing customers themselves, because there is there's a, 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 a mutual, a shared responsibility on the employees and the customer itself. So you need to design different ways to ensure the high quality of your service. In this slide here, I shared with you some uh, some uh, Pokayoka opportunities. So you probably want to think about it when you create your business, you need to look into how to improve the quality is by looking into these factors and create a Pokayoka tool to help them. So for example, for the server errors, they're doing work incorrectly for some reason, and this is divided into task, treatment, tangible, uh, preparation, encounter, resolution. So in the task, maybe the employees would uh, do the work incorrectly, or maybe doing work not required, extra work that is not required, or doing work in the wrong order, uh, or doing work too slowly. So now your responsibility as a service owner is to work on the task part and figure out how we could solve this using a pokayoka. So for example, if the doing work in wrong order, you could maybe do a color management and numbering saying, okay, here is um, step number one, which is red, step number two, three, this is what you wanna do. So maybe providing a visual pictures for each step would help your employees to do the work in order. Uh, doing work not required, maybe something you will also create some another visual management tool to help you to do the pokayoka and they will say, oh, well, we have to stop right here. This is not required. Treatment, uh, treatment failure to acknowledge the customer, failure to react uh, appropriately, failure to listen to the customer. So you will probably wanna uh, sit up a form where you say, okay, well, talk to the customer for, uh, 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 for about 10 minutes. Uh, I, every time I go to the dentist, my dentist appointment, I see a new, uh, a, a new person who's, who's doing the cleaning for me, for example, and they, they're asking me questions about, you know, my family and everything, how that's happened. So they, their goal is to connect with the person, uh, with, a, with, a, with a customer at a personal level. So I'm sure that they have in the system some short information about myself that he's he has a family, he's married, his kids go to school, etc. So the person who's giving me the service is has a conversation points for us. So uh, this is how maybe to uh, listen to the customer or maybe uh, if you could fail or to acknowledge the customer, maybe you should fill a, a, a checklist saying, okay, well, did you acknowledge the customer? This is this way will the employees will, uh, will, uh, uh, will fulfill that goal. 
And so you could go on and on with these, but these are uh, uh, excellent opportunities that you could create for Kayoka and will improve the quality of your services. All right, the next would be the quality function deployment, another quality tool that we use it to translate the customer needs into a customer specification. And what we do here is uh, sometimes when you talk to the customer, you say, okay, well, I want my uh, service to be reliable. Well, that's good, but from a technical perspective, uh, we need, what do you mean by uh, reliable? Now, we as a service owner, we need to translate these needs from, from uh, their language, the customer language into the business language. The, critical to business, critical to quality, what well, this is what we call. It. So one is the voice of the customer, what their needs, VOC. And the other one, translate this voice of the customer, the VOC to the voice of quality or the voice to the business, what exactly I should do. And it's called the house for quality because if you look into the, the, the matrix, it looks like a house and it's divided into different rooms. So here's one room, second room, a uh, third room, and there's an attic and a chimney, and etc. There's a basement as well. So this is the QFD. It's a house of quality, and we use this particular tool to understand what the customer wants, to listen to the voice of the customer. We say, okay, a reliable. The customer would say, I want a reliable uh, service. Okay. Well, now how we could translate that reliability it could be translated into by training offering offer training to our employees, responsiveness. Maybe we could do, uh, uh, also training would work on that. Maybe the capacity would be, if we hire more people, that would work as well, responsiveness. Assurance, now this is could be by uh, assurance, which is dealing with, uh, with a customer uh, in caring. We need to look into the, maybe the, uh, the attitude for, for the employees say maybe we need to work on that. So, so basically here's, you survey the customer on this area, you survey, what do you want to, to see in my service? They will say, I want, my, I want to see in the service, a reliable service, responsive ser service, assure, uh, assurance in the service, empathy, uh, intangibles. So you, you, you bring these from the customer voice from through surveys or uh, uh, maybe a uh, point of ob observation, maybe a uh, focus group. There are so many ways to collect the voice of the customer and you bring it to your team and say, okay, how we could translate these into something uh, measurable that we can do as a business. So you come up with a training, attitude, capacity, information and equipment. And these will help you to translate the customer needs. And in this room here, you will tell you on which one is the most important. So you assign, you say to the customer, how important to have a reliable uh, on a scale one to 10. And they said, okay, well, nine, um, I need my service to be reliable. Uh, how is How important to receive a responsive uh, uh, service that would be seven out of ten, and so on. So you ask your customer to uh, re relate how important these uh, customer expectation out of uh, ten, and then on here you see how is the reliability related to training. Oh, that would be on a scale of ten, that would be eight, and then on attitude, reliability and attitude, that does not. There's no relationship. Capacity, no relationship. Information, reliability and information, there is some relationship. So I'm gonna give it five uh, in equipment and reliability, that would be five out of 10. And then you come up with the numbers. And now in here for the weighted score, you multiply nine times eight plus seven times three plus six times five plus four times zero plus two plus times two. And you add the total would be 127. And you do the same thing for all of these. And then you could rank them. So which one is the most important that you should focus on and which one is the, um, which one is the, so if you look into these scores, you will find that the training is the, the most important thing that we should focus. It seems that from a customer perspective, from the team perspective, the company team, that would be the most important to focus on. And here, on here, we, we look into the benchmarking, which is another concept that will be 
uh, talking about in the next slide, but this is basically comparing yourself to other competitors and see. Uh, so in here we have five competitors, but I recommend to go between three and five uh, and see how you're doing uh, uh, and how your competitors do in terms of these customer expectation. So for example, dealer number um, uh, four is doing great with the reliability. Uh, dealer number three is uh, doing, uh, actually this is this is one, two, three, scale of one to five, how the first dealer, the, the village Volvo here in this example is working with reliability, that, that would be five. How about the Volvo dealer, that would be three. So the uh, village dealer is higher score and you do uh, go one by one and ask yourself how these uh, dealers are doing. Uh, so there are two competitors, you com you benchmark them on, on what they're doing best, and you could maybe, you put another column for yourself and say how you are doing uh, in, in that side. Uh, the attic is measuring the relationship between uh, these technical attributes. Uh, so for example, uh, that would be strong, medium, or weak. Uh, what's the relationship between training and attitude? That would be a strong training and capacity there, that would be weak. Uh, training and information, that would be nothing, there's no relation. Training and equipment, that would be a medium relationship. So you, you do this. There is, uh, if you look into my YouTube videos, you will find a, a full example on the house quality. But uh, in short, in short, I wanna say this, uh, house quality is important to translate the voice of the customer to the voice of the process, the voice of the business. And whenever they say something, you have to translate it into something technical from a business perspective. And then once you do the weighting, you find out which one the highest score to focus on. And that would give you a uh, uh, priority on which one of these priority will focus on. Again, there's an example in another video on the QFD. If you look into my videos on quality function deployment or the house quality, you will find a full example on how we could build the uh, house quality. Uh, benchmarking, again, this is another tool that we used it in the QFD, but also it could be used on a separate scale, which is saying, okay, well, I wanna understand where my situation in the market. Okay, and I know there are two other competitors in the market. So I wanna uh, measure my performance against these uh, competitors and say, who's doing good in this and who's doing good in that area and so on. And this will give you uh, a good expectation, a good uh, understanding of your position. Uh, we did talk about this briefly that walk through audits it's important because you want to uh, look into your business from a customer perspective impressions about service quality are determined by both internal the the the, the internal process and the outside the of the process the outcome and walk through audits is just taking the customer focus uh, into consideration we need to look into the, the process into uh, the eyes from the eyes of the customer. So um, what you do is basically you, you you walk through your process, the entire through the entire customer experience is tracked from beginning to the end. So you go to your process and from the beginning to the end, you say, okay, I am a customer right now, what I should see. And you start drawing some flow charts, expectation, and so on. So you wear a different hat than your hat, which is basically now you are the business owner, you are the, you're providing a service, but now switch the hats and go into your business from the customer. Imagine that you are a customer that you want to buy something from you, from that store, or you want to service, uh, you want to get that service. How that experience, and now these will be very good to improve your the quality of the service. As I mentioned, there are many other tools that we could go on and on about the quality of improvement, uh, such as the cost of quality, how we could compare the cost of quality with uh, a new initiative. So if I wanna buy uh, a, a new machine or I wanna hire a new employee to better serve our customers, okay, what the cost of quality that will pay me that employee. So maybe the, the reputation will be improved. Maybe the wait time 
for customers would be less. And so we would be able to serve better customer, more customers. So serving more customer means more money and this money will go into hiring new people and so on. So this is another one of the quality techniques that we could use cost of quality. Uh, process control, the statistical process control, you draw uh, process control and you start observing your process and see if, if you are within the specification limit or uh, outside of the specification limits. Uh, but I, I don't want to go on and on with the quality. I just want to keep it short here. Uh, there are also Kano analysis. Kano analysis, it's another interesting tool that we could use to understand the customer needs and whether the expectation, are they expecting what, uh, what they are exactly expecting from you? Is it the basic or the performance or exceeding? Are you gonna make them excited? What the features in your, in your, in your service will make them excited? So this is something that you wanna look at. There's another video on Kano analysis, look into that. There's a very interesting, uh, it is very interesting tool that you could use it to understand your customer. So the, the whole thing about the service is understanding your customer. The more tool that you use, the better for you to understand your customer, whether QFD, whether, Q, uh, whether uh, surveying, whether the benchmarking, whether the Kano analysis, whether the cost of quality, there's so many things that you could use. There's so many tools that you could use to improve the quality. I want you to focus on just very few things that I, I went through these slides, but there are other more that I could share with you. And you could find some videos in, uh, in my other uh, class that I teach, I teach quality assurance. So you could find these videos in that, uh, in that playlist. Uh, with that said, that's the end of uh, the uh, quality in the service. Uh, there's so many things that to cover in, in this area in particular. I want you just to focus on, on very few things. Keep it simple. As long as it's working with you, that's that's perfect. Whether you use, again, Tagoshi is another way to survey your customers and focus on just very specific, the important factors, or you could use the QFD, the quality function deployment, or you could use the, uh, the, the, the package for the service, the quality ask, ask uh, your, uh, your uh, measure your performance against five areas that we did discuss it earlier. Uh, there are so many ways to do improve the quality of service. Uh, but I'm going to keep it short to the point. So you use just very few, you don't have to use all of them. Uh, with that said, I'd like to thank you and I'll see you in another video.